Hi everyone, Mrs. A here. We are looking at simplifying rational expressions. I have here a rational expression and in the numerator we have a, a quadratic and in the denominator we have another quadratic. And so when we want to simplify these, um, we are looking for opportunities to divide out any common factors that are in the numerator and the denominator. But right now, these are the numerator and the denominator are both in standard form. So to see if there are common factors, we have to factor both the numerator and the denominator. So really, your first step when you are simplifying rational expressions or even working with rational expressions is to factor both the numerator and the denominator. That's what we should work toward. So in the numerator, I have a simple trinomial, so I'm going to work with products and sums. And in the denominator, I have a difference of squares. Uh, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because I'm assuming now that we know how to factor quadratic expressions. If you need some review on factoring quadratic expressions, please go to my other videos on factoring. I have a lot of them and all the different types. So go and review that um, and then come back and watch this after uh, because I'm not going to really go into a lot of detail about the factoring part here. So in the numerator, my product is 20 and my sum is negative 9. And so the two numbers that we have uh, that match those um, properties are going to be negative 4 and negative 5. So that's what I'm going to use to factor the numerator. And in the denominator, like I said, I have a difference of squares here with a 4 squared from that 16. So I'm going to rewrite this now in factored form. In the numerator, I'm going to have x minus 4 and x minus 5. And in the denominator, I'm going to have 4 minus x and 4 plus x. Okay, at this point, when it's factored, I stop and I look at my restrictions. The restrictions are the values that the x cannot be equal to. And that's because we have a division happening and we know that we can't divide by zero. So really, you're going to use these factors to find the x values that make the denominator equal to zero. And when it's in factored form, that's easier for us to do. So from this first factor, I see that x can't be 4 because then it would make this factor 0 and my denominator would be 0. And then from this factor, I see that x can't be negative 4 because if it were, then this would, make, this would be 0 and it would make my denominator equal to 0. So immediately, I look at my restrictions, I write them down so I don't forget x cannot be equal to 4 or negative 4. And I just leave that there for now so I don't forget about them. All right, let's go back now to the simplifying. Uh, I see that I have in my numerator an x minus 4 factor, and in my denominator I have a 4 minus x. Now, those are not exactly the same, but we can manipulate this a little bit to make them exactly the same. If I take this factor and I factor out or divide by a negative 1, well, then I'm going to have negative 4 plus x, which I can write as x minus 4. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. So the numerator is staying the same. And in the denominator, I'm dividing out a negative and I'm changing this factor to x minus 4, like this. And then I still have that 4 plus x. Okay, now I see that I have an x minus 4 being multiplied in the numerator and an x minus 4 being multiplied in the denominator. I can divide those out because they are the same. They're going to divide and just make a 1. And we know that if we multiply by 1, it doesn't change anything. So I'm going to do that. And then that negative, I'm just going to pull it out to the front. You can actually do a couple of different things with that negative. But it's all the same. So I'm going to pull it out to the front. And I'm left with x minus 5 in the numerator and 4 plus x, oops, plus x in the denominator. Um, that negative, I can distribute it to the numerator if I want. I can leave it like this. I can put brackets around this to really emphasize the negative, um, all of those things are the same, so it doesn't actually matter. And then, because that's my final answer, I'm going to write, restate my restrictions. X cannot be equal to positive and negative four. And that is the final answer. It's simplified and the restrictions are written. We want that whole thing as our final answer. Thanks for watching, Mrs. A loves math.